So to start, I'd like to invite Captain Richard Howe, Managing Director of the Maritime Claim and Services Private Limited and Yacht Surveys and Services Private Limited for his presentation titled, Yachting Casualties, Photo Illustrated. Captain Howe, please. Good morning to you. I apologise for using a stick. It's not just safety at sea that happens. I have stepped off the off my boat on Saturday and uh, did a bit of damage to my leg. So uh, now I'm uh, walking with a uh, a walking stick for a change. Just excuse me. I'm just getting my bits and pieces here. Right now, I'm. Uh, I'm a master mariner, I spent 15 years at sea and I was captain at sea and I came ashore and I, I did a lot of sailing uh, since I was a kid and uh, I sailed for UK and Australia and Singapore and Singapore in the Admiral's Cup and Southern Cross Series etc. Uh, so I'm a pretty keen sailor and I did a couple of years sailing around the world by myself, which I must have been nuts, but still I uh, did that. And uh, I've been in Singapore for 42 years and I'm married to a Singaporean. Now we'll get, that's, that's uh, so you know that I'm, uh, there's a certain things lacking here, I think, if I'm so crazy to keep on doing the sailing by yourself. However, uh, I safely did that. Uh, so we get, now I have a company uh, which looks after problems on ships but I also uh, have a, a yacht surveys and services, and we do a lot of work for insurance companies, etc. What I'm going to do now is to show you some photographs of accidents that have happened that I've dealt with during the last 20 years or so. And the first one we're looking at uh, is fires. It's a Sunseeker 82. She was carrying out sea trials on the west coast of Singapore with shore technicians on board. They were all looking at the steering, and in the meantime, a, a fire started in the engine room. We don't know how, uh, but it uh, burnt. And, and so you can see the... Oh, right. There we are. These are a few ones which the uh, Singapore authorities did a fantastic job with, and uh, you can see what was happening there. It ended up sinking. Uh, and having to be solved. The, the, uh, the second one we've got here is a very recent one, uh, which was uh, headlines in the Straits Times uh, on the marina at Keppel Bay, where a, uh, a, a yacht, a motor catamaran caught on fire. Uh, there were three other yachts in close proximity, which also got damaged uh, quite severely. Uh, I did the investigation. It's still underway, so I can't discuss the findings, although I'm pretty sure we know exactly what's happened. Uh, but uh, you can see that's part of the, the debris after the uh, fire, and that's what it looked like uh, when uh, it was lifted up out of the water. Uh, it was quite a mess. Uh, there's cleaning up, and you can see how clean it's got. Now, we're now on to, uh, uh, th that's all that's left of a, a boat that sunk in Malaysia. And it was a Grand Banks, it caught on fire, and that's what happens. Now, I'm talking about fires, because they're pretty dangerous. And the most common causes that I've found are uh, leaking petrol uh, on the Many of these boats that have got inboard, outboard engines, they have the engine in the hull and the outboard, they uh, leak sometimes, they get a leak going into the bilge and uh, someone starts up an engine without using the, the blowers to suck the fumes out of the bilge and or they open the thing and we've got a cigarette and there's a bang and that's happened a lot. Uh, there's also electrical short circuits in the area with inflammable items, which was part of that one earlier on in Keppel Bay. Uh, 
there's, uh, there's cracked or leaking fuel high pressure lines uh, which spray onto the exhaust. That's happened on quite a number of occasions. Gas stoves not being shut off properly at the gas bottle or the stoves having faulty uh, valves or gas detectors. The, so that, these are all problems that, that uh, cause fires. Now, there's some results of more fires that I've taken. That boat didn't sink, which is a change, but that's uh, another one there. Uh, there's, now, this is a grounding, and that was a, a very nice boat. Uh, it was an Azimuth 68, which ran aground doing 25 knots. And the reason why it ran aground was because the skipper was told there's plenty of water there and you cannot trust lots of the charts in, in Indonesia or Malaysia. Uh, but I'll discuss that a little bit later. But the, that's what happened to it. It pushed the uh, eye bracket straight through the hull and it flooded the whole boat and uh, it, uh, it, whenever the tide came up, the boat filled up with water. So I did put a cement box in, so that stopped the water from coming in. We floated it up and towed it to Singapore, but it was a total loss. It cost more to fix up than uh, it would have to, uh, uh, to just pay off the insurance. So that's what happened there. Now, that's, that's a picture of it there when it's... With, now, this one here is a sloop in the King's Cup, and it, uh, it was another yacht dragged anchor, and it, tripped, it cut this, uh, the, the bow line, the, the chain, the anchor chain actually came, was connected to a rope so that they could drop it quickly and go racing. And then, uh, anyway, it, it came up, and the pitching caused it to break, and that was a total loss as well. Uh, it was the, the owner of the boat was not to blame on that one at all. It was just one of these things that happened. Uh, now, there, there's bits and pieces of things that happened. You can see rudders being uh, uh, bots, uh, propellers being damaged. These are just a few things. Now, here is a very interesting one. You can see a yacht there. It was taken by this one, was taken before the accident, and it was used, taken by a drone. And there is, you can see it arrowed, that's the boat there. And my boat happens to be just along to the left of that. But uh, he was close in shore, and he hit deep water where he anchored, which is about 13 metres, so he had about 50, 50 metres of cable or more, plus the length of his boat, and when the tide changed, he swung in and went over the top of the reef. And when he went to get off, he thought, well, he'd just kick his engines ahead to, to uh, uh, get closer to the anchor, so it'd make it easier to heave up. Unfortunately, he was sitting on the rocks at that stage, and so the, that's what ended up there with a, uh, a, a broken shaft and uh, a bent rudder. So... There's another boat, again, he sank, uh, didn't go ground, he sank, and uh, because there was a, uh, one of his uh, uh, lines, his cooling water lines, uh, the, the uh, uh, sorry, I'm just uh, looking for what I, uh, yes, he, he, his, uh, I apologise, just one second. Uh, anyway, the, it was the Jubilee Eclipse that hold the cooling water line on. He only had one Jubilee clip and, instead of two, and that one Jubilee clip broke off, and so the, the, the boat flooded while it was ashore. He came back, there was no boat. Uh, now, these are common causes of accidents, unfortunately. Uh, now we have... Uh, oh, these are more suffering from... Uh, uh, fr from sinking. Now, these, this one is a collision, and it was a collision with a Singapore vessel, uh, but uh, it was down in Port Klang, and that was it coming up. Two people not looking out. The ship's 
The ships weren't looking out and neither was the guy on the yacht. And he was just cruising along and they both had a collision. Uh, and uh, the yacht came off worst. Uh, we, did, we did find out which ship it was. They didn't report it. We did find out which ship it was and they made restitution. The next one we've got, oh, that's uh, collisions. And you can see the bow on that. And these catamarans are quite dangerous. When they hit something, it, the bow normally splits from the waterline or below the waterline, the forefoot, right up the top. It, it, and so that happens quite a lot. And that's what it looks like when you see these, uh, these messes there. This was a large uh, yacht that uh, ran into a wall. And it didn't do too much good, but it's all fixed up nicely now. And it wasn't enough damage to even reach the deductible. Uh, so it was not so good. Now, there's another collision. I didn't take those photographs, but someone else did uh, for the claim. But uh, someone put the, the, uh, the, 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 th the throttle and gear ahead instead of astern and went straight up the other boat. So these stupid things do happen. Uh, more damage for grounding there, but uh, it's quite a mess. Now, you can see some of these bent propellers. That's so common. It's grounding. People going too close. They're not using uh, their navigation systems properly. Uh, what have we got there? Now, there is a vessel that was left sitting there, a junk, and it was for... Uh, it was for the sheriff's auction and I valued it. I valued it at $1. Uh, and they sold it for $9,000. And uh, it had to be towed away from uh, the marina to repair it or whatever they were going to do. And it sank one and a half kilometres away from the marina. So it was rather an expensive $1 exercise. Uh, and. You can see that's the bow of it. When I walked past it, it, was, it had been raining a bit before and I had my umbrella with me and I walked past it and I thought, what's that? And I leant over and gave it a poke with my umbrella and it went straight through the, the hull, which was one reason why I valued it at $1. Uh, now, there's an unhappy ship. Uh, I, I was... I was sailing along and I, I'd never seen this before and the way that salt has gone across the, the bulbous bow and I found it was most amusing so I took a photograph of it but it does look rather unhappy. Uh, now this is, a, this is a, a, a classic picture. You can see it was a head-on collision uh, and uh, you can see how badly it was damaged. And there is a picture of the other ship that had hit, and you can see the imprint of its bow straight in there. One was coming across, uh, one was heading uh, westbound, the, 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 big, the one on the, the, uh, the right-hand side of the picture, and the other was coming across eastbound and cutting across to go to the Keppel to pick up the pilot. And the one with that uh, one with a really bent bow went harder starboard and the other guy went harder port. And so there was the head-on collision. But, uh, uh, and we couldn't anchor it because his anchors were uh, disappeared into the, into the mess there. So we had to get a buoy and, and put the MPA call, or PSA said, well, you tell us what you're going to do with it. And I went on board and we, we got a, a buoy put down and we moored it stern too. Uh, but these things happen. These are another uh, few pictures which you might find uh, interesting. Uh, you can see uh, that that was a that. Well, I'm just getting onto my pictures here. Excuse me. Just. Uh, Right, I'm, because I can't quite see the pictures there that they're showing. Okay, uh, the, the one is a, a it was a passenger ship uh, which hit an uncharted uh, uh, reef 
in the Solomon Islands, and the reef was called, I can't remember, uh, Buffalo Reef or something like that, named after a Royal Navy sailing sh ship back in the 1800s that had run aground there. But it was put down as an, un an uncharted reef, and I went out and there was a, a nice big reef and it had been found in, in the 1800s. So, uh, however, that is still there, that ship, uh, because they couldn't, uh, they couldn't, uh, well, they floated it, and the locals then chased them away. And so they sank again, and uh, uh, that was that. They weren't allowed back, and so now it's a bit of a tourist resort. You can see there also on the, the, the bottom right-hand side, a ship that hit a, a reef, and there's a huge big rock uh, stuck in the ship, which was quite amazing. Uh, on the the next, uh, have we got the next one down? Uh, here we go. The you can see that was a collision. The top left hand side, it was uh, hit by a container ship. That ship was on its first maiden voyage, and it was hit there. On the right hand side top, there is a a ship in Dampier which uh, ran aground, lost its steering, and uh, it, it ran aground. Uh, we got it off a couple of, uh, couple of weeks later. On the bottom left, there's, uh, in, in Singapore, uh, it rolled over purely because it was unstable and it sank. Uh, so that was actually salved in Singapore and uh, uh, lifted, so that was a good end. And on the right-hand side was a, a ship down in in Indonesia, where they uh, they lost a thousand tons of of uh, cargo or fuel oil, rather. Uh, but uh, anyway, that was that was the end of that. We got we got that ship off and we cleaned up the mess, and that was it. Now we'd, we've talked about collisions. We've talked about uh, running aground, uh, fires, etc., and all of them, uh, to a certain extent, or sometimes to a large extent, but to a certain extent, they all could have been avoided. Uh, and it's just that we have to get onto the showing people what is necessary uh, to, to uh, uh, prevent these from happening. And that's, I think, what we have to uh, get more to the people that are sailing in Singapore. Thanks very much. That's all for me.